God said it's necessary that I lose the weight for what he has called me to in the kingdom. But what is God requiring you to lose wow. for the kingdom? All right. What is God telling you that can't walk with you this year? What is God saying to you about your body, your issue, your trauma, your situation, your circumstance that you're not going to be able to carry with you. And as we preach today about Jesus, amen, going to the garden of Gethsemane. Are you with me in the word of God? And as we go, we see that Jesus has come to the garden. And in the amplified version, it says, somebody say wine press. Wine press. Amen. Olive press. Gethsemane is called wine press. It's also called, called olive press. All olive press, which is a place of pressing. Amen. And Jesus, the Bible says, he called three men. Somebody say three men. Amen. Amen. He called three men away from the twelve. He started out with twelve. But then he said, sit over here. Nine. He took three into Gethsemane. Hallelujah. See, there are times where when God is going to break you and God is going to deal with you, you can't take everybody with you on certain journeys. All right. Because people are not going to take it as serious as you are taking it. Right. For them, it's a joke. For you, you are dying. Uh -huh. wow. And they don't understand what it's really about. All right. Hallelujah. Everybody that's going on the journey and was on the journey with me on even on yesterday and the one I took before didn't take it as seriously as I was taking it. My God. Didn't see the seriousness of what I was doing. See, they were just climbing the mountain, but I'm fighting a demon. Amen. I'm fighting the spirit that's fighting my bloodline. I'm fighting the demon that's killed my family. Jesus. Hallelujah. So they just dealing with the mountain, but I got a personal mountain that I'm climbing as I climb my the God. mountain. Hallelujah. He said, sit here while I go over there and pray. Prayer is a necessity as you prepare for elevation. Yeah. You can play with them if you want to in 2019. There's always, always a passage of scripture that governs the year. This year is Joshua 10, where all the kings came up against Gibeon with a B. And he had to call Joshua to come help him in the battle. So then that's telling me that there will be major warfare this year. Not indirect where they're throwing rocks and hiding their hands, but very direct and in your face. Wow. This year. Play with them if you want to right. about your prayer life this year. Play with them if you want to. You ain't going to be able to make it. Hallelujah. He said, sit here. You're going to have to tell folks, sit over here because I got to separate from you because I need to go and pray because you distracted me. If you come with me, I can't pray with you. My right? God. Hallelujah. He said, sit here while I go over there and pray and take him with him, Peter, and the two sons of Zebedee James and John. Peter means little rock. The sons of Zebedee, James and John. Zebedee means Jehovah has endowed with the blessing. Two, what? You say, well, those are two great people to take with me and separate with me as I go and pray. These same three men were with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration where he was elevated. But see, the same people you take in your elevation cannot be the same people that you take as God breaks you. There must be a separation and it must be a different kind of people that see you elevate. Anybody can see you elevate, but everybody.
somebody can't see you be broken. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. They were grieved. He was grieved and greatly distressed. Jesus was very, very God and very, very man. He struggled with his assignments. There are times that we go through life and we struggle whether we should go, whether we should not go. We struggle with whether we should do or whether we should not do. We struggle with the assignment. And some of us really ain't on no assignment. Amen. God just dealing with our nasty flesh that we don't carry nonsense year after year. God is trying to break you and stop you. All right. yeah. Because you keep heading in the wrong direction, going in the same circle year after year. There's a reason why you keep circling. It's time to deal with the demon that's fighting you. Somebody say Goliath. Goliath. Hallelujah. Goliath, I told you, means exile. And to be exiled means to be driven from the place that God has assigned you to. Can I preach today? And so he said, my soul is deeply grieved. So that I am almost dying of sorrow. He's breaking it down to the core group that he's pulled out of the group that's already separated. He's called them out and explained to them what is really going on with his life. He's saying to them, I'm, I'm encountering something that I've never encountered before. I am struggling with my assignment. I feel like I might want to leave here. Hallelujah. Stay with me and pray. Watch with me as I go and pray. He's already separated the 12 to the 9. Put the 9 in one place. Called the 3 and said, I'm going to separate myself again. But I want you to stay here separated from the others and watch with me. It's a different kind of, of assignment. Hallelujah. He said, I'm grieved, greatly distressed. Jesus is talking here. He's saying he's grieved. Come on. He's distressed. But sometimes the people around you don't see the seriousness of your struggle. Wow. Sometimes they don't see what's really going on with you. They hear you, but they don't hear you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Stay here and stay awake. He said, just stay awake and keep watch with me. And after going a little further, he fell face down. Come on here. He fell prostrate. He didn't kneel down. He fell down. So that shows the seriousness of what he's feeling inside. He fell on his face. He fell on his face. And said, my father, if it is possible, if it's consistent with your will, let this cup pass from me. So what is the cup of possible? Huh? People ask me all the time. What is apostleship? I said it's a cup of suffering. All day long. It's a cup of suffering. It's an invitation to the cup. Come and drink. Lay the Come. But I can't say no to the invitation. If I say no, I would die. Literally. People don't understand the seriousness. See, you play. <laughs> you ain't really in this thing. You still struggling whether you should make it to church on time. See, it ain't really real to you until you're in it and it's time to sit the cup. You still play with it. You still play. 
You're not serious about your walk yet. But when you get serious about your walk, things about you are going to change. Hallelujah. He said, if it's consistent with your will, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to drink the cup. I don't want to drink it. But, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. I'd rather let it pass, because I really don't want to go through it. Huh? Mm -hmm. But I know the people coming behind me oh my God. that must be saved. Yeah. Let me tell you how powerful the blood of Jesus is. Over 2,000 years, this blood was shed. But it's still wiping out sin over 2,000 years later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it wipes out the sin that you've committed. Then it wipes out what you ain't even committed. Mm. That's a little deep thing here. Yeah. Right there. I need, you to, I need you to hear what I'm saying. So he said, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples that he told to watch and found them sleeping. When what is around you don't really understand your warfare. They were sleeping. But isn't that something how he only spoke to Peter? He didn't, spoke, he didn't speak to James and John. He just spoke to Peter. What does Peter mean? Little rock. Who's the big rock? Hallelujah. He said, so you couldn't stay awake and keep watch with me for one hour. Keep actively watching and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. That's your struggle. A wretched man that I am. Hmm? Your struggle is with your flesh. Your struggle is with this body that you in. Huh? Your body is what keeps sitting. Even though your spirit wants to do what is right. The struggle between humanity and divinity. Jesus. Your human nature versus your divine nature is a struggle constantly between the flesh and the spirit. Jesus was letting them know the spirit is with it. Oh yeah, you want to pay your tithes. But the flesh, we say I got too many bills. Hmm? The spirit want to be the church. But the flesh say, you know, I don't feel well today. I told somebody this morning, you got a choice whether you can miss service. I ain't got no choice. Who going to preach if I don't show up? If I wake up in the morning on Sunday and say, yeah, I don't think I'm going to go today. What's going to happen? Hmm? You might got a choice. But there's other people that sip in the cup that ain't got no choice. He said, all right, if I feel like going to church, I'm going to go to church. If I feel like I don't want to go to church, I ain't going to church. Because you ain't serious about your walk with God. Oh God, God will never speak out of his word to you. That's what we got to understand. God will never tell you don't go to church. Let me say it again. God will never tell you not to go to church. When his word say, forsake not the assembly of yourself. That's what he said. God ain't going to tell you don't show up. God ain't going to tell you your ministry meaning you don't go to church. That's not Bible. And one thing about God, John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He is his Word. So then how can he speak something that's not his word. Can I help somebody today? Somebody say help me black woman. 
Hallelujah. He said the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Went away a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words once more. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Listen, the hour of my sacrifice is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners whose way and nature is to oppose God. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is near. Mm -hmm. Listen, if they fell asleep on Jesus, they gonna fall asleep on you too. My God. <laughs> if Jesus couldn't keep them awake, with the seriousness of what he was going through, you ain't gonna be able to keep them with what you going through. When God is breaking you, some people won't take it serious. Huh? Your family will say, oh, you trying to be better than us. Huh? Like when I was trying to get on with welfare. Well, we been on welfare. I was on welfare. Yes, sisters on welfare. You going to be on welfare. I said, no, I'm not. When you're trying to break cycles in your bloodline, there's always going to be crabs trying to pull you back yes. in the bucket. There's always going to be people in the church and out of the church. But what you can't do is lose focus. This year, there's a preparation that must take place. There's a pain of a price. This is not free. Huh? Your salvation is free. But your walk with God is going to cost you. It's going to cost you people. It's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you some people that you thought would be with you forever. It's going to cost you some open doors that you thought was open for you. It's going to cost some windows that you thought God was going to pour through. It's going to cost you. Somebody say pay the, pay the price. For elevation. For elevation. If Jesus struggled. What makes you think you're not going to struggle? Come on. If Jesus battled. What makes you think you're not going to battle? God had a whole side. He had a human side as well as a divine side. And we have the same. There's a human side to you. Then there's a spiritual side that keep pushing you, pushing you. Remember when you won't say, when you was in the club? I remember drinking, huh? I was in the world drinking. But that drink just couldn't feel me. The drink I was taking, the dancing I was doing at the club, couldn't feel that part of me. We keep trying to drink to feel what's empty inside of us. It can't feel it because it's meant for God. And as I was drinking, hmm, smoking weed, selling weed, as I was doing it, there was an emptiness that I could not deny was in my life. That's your spiritual side pulling you to God. Inside of you is a God-shaped vacuum that can only be filled with God. I've tried the bedroom. I've tried drugs. I've tried alcohol. I've tried people. Men and women. It does not Feel the void inside of you. Like the word will do. Like God will do. And no matter how empty or how full a building is, just stepping in the house of God, do something to it. Singing the praise and worship songs. It does something to you. I don't know about you. If 
feels something in you. Maybe that's why you're still battling. Because God ain't filling those empty places in your life. Hallelujah. Let's keep reading. Glory to God. As Jesus was still speaking, Judas is carrying One of the twelve disciples came up accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who came as representatives from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him. Immediately, Judas went to Jesus and said, Greetings, rejoice, Rabbi. See how wicked people are. They'll make you think it's a time to rejoice, but they're about to break you down. They'll make you think it's a happy time, but it's time to go through warfare. That's the importance of your prayer life. Your prayer life will position you so you can see ahead of time. Right. See, that's what Jesus did all the time so that he could see ahead of time. See, a lot of things I go through, I already know it's about to happen because of my prayer life. And as I pray, I already see this one ain't got no business being around me. This one ain't got no business. I can't walk with this one. I can't talk with this one. I can't deal with this one. I already see it because of my prayer life. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. I will see. There's places I ain't going to be able to go no more. Huh? Christians gathered at the Aloha Stadium on yesterday. But I was climbing a mountain. Come on, God. Huh? Yes. In some places you ain't gonna be able to go. And even when everybody else is going, and it ain't even a bad thing, you ain't gonna be able to go. Because when God separates you from the twinkle, mm. to the nine, to the three, yes. and which group you in? Are you in the twelve, the nine, or the three? Oh my God. Which one you in? <laughs> the twelve went to the state. Huh? But I was in the three. Watching and praying for what was about to happen. He said, Greetings with a kiss. Amen. And that's known in Bible days to greet somebody. With a holy kiss. Amen. And so greetings. Rejoice. Rabbi. And he kissed him. In a deliberate act. Of betrayal. That's in my Bible. It might not be in yours. He kissed him. <laughs> like it was the time. Right. To rejoice. Like it was a time to be happy. He kissed him. Like everything was fine. He kissed him. And people going to kiss you. This year, like it is time to rejoice. But it's not. It's a deliberate act mm. of betrayal. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> so Jesus, because he had a prayer life and saw ahead of time, Jesus said to Judas, Friend, do what you came to do. I already know you was coming. I already know you betrayed me. I already know what's up. I already know what you're about to do. So do what you came to do. Like I told you the other day. That, 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 do it. Do it quick. Get it over with. Yeah. I know what you come to do. You were born to do this. Yeah. Just like I was born to die for the lives of people. You came to betray me and stop me from my sin. Yeah. Huh? There's a price that must be paid for elevation. So, oh 
The kiss came before the cross. The cross came before death. The death came before the burial. But the burial came before resurrection. Know that when God is about to elevate you, when they kiss you, it's almost time for resurrection. Remember that. See, because it's all about your perception and how you view things. Amen? Because like I said, if you've got a prayer life, you already know what's coming. So you know the kiss is coming before the cross. The cross is coming before death. Death is coming before burial. And after the burial is coming my resurrection. After the kiss comes resurrection. There's elevation that's coming in your life. But you must drink the cup first. You must suffer. And that was something about Jesus that was amazing to me. Because as they whipped him, as they beat him, as he was carrying the cross. Hallelujah. In the crowd, being a public spectacle to people.
that I'm going through. I can't bring you close. You got to stay with the nine. Yeah. Or the twelve. I can't even have you in the three. Mm. Because it's just me. And God. Oh, my God. There's a price. We got to pay the price. In order to walk. And go through. Stand on your feet. If you're going to elevate. You're going to go through. You're going to suffer. Things going to be painful sometimes. Things going to hurt sometimes. But the God you serve. Won't look for pity. Because there's a process. That we can't circumvent. There's a process. That we can't take out of this. We can't take the process to go into elevation. Lift your hands in here. Go and pray for everybody to get to Musa. Father God, we thank you. Preparation for elevation. As we, Lord, received your word, be your servant as well. We thank you, O oh God, for what you have done, what you are doing, for what you are about to do. We realize, God, that we must drink the cup sometimes. And there won't always be somebody around us, watching for us, rooting us on, pushing us to destiny. But regardless of that, Jesus hung on the cross alone, still going through as one of the thieves accused him and said, bring us all down if you be the Christ. The accuser of the brethren will always be accusing, but yet we must press on. We thank you for your people that have gathered here. We ask that you would strengthen us for the year 2019. We're going to reach some rough times because the year has an assignment, has an assignment in our life. There'll be births, there'll be deaths, there'll be blessings, there'll be judgment when we don't listen. But God, Give us mercy and strength to go through. As I added up 2019, I still came with the number 12. That means government. So this will still be a year God is demanding order in our lives. We shouldn't want to be the person we used to be. We should want to be a different person. We shouldn't want to bring the old and the new, but some have God. Those that have you, deal with them. Just like you do your children. As we do our children, there must be discipline. Whatever you need to do, do it so that we can reach our destiny. People don't preach about hell enough, God. But in hell we'll lift our eyes if we don't do what is right. God, give us strength. Give us the stamina to stand. Refresh us and renew us. Let your hand rest upon us. We thank you for your word that will never return void. But like a sword it is cut. Revealing what is wrong. And revealing what is right. We bless you, O oh God. As we enter into this year, use us for your glory. Teach us, train us, prepare us for each elevation. We thank you, O oh God. We give you praise and honor. We give you all the glory, the honor and praise. 
In Jesus' name, we thank you, God. Amen. Somebody say it's offering time. It's offering time. And we're ready to give. And we're ready to give. It's offering time. It's offering time.